things work. <laughs> now we have to be serious. Yeah, I'm not very good at that, so you know it is. It is. Okay. Welcome everybody to the next part of our Open Knowledge Networks speaker series, which is part of NSF's Track A and B Convergence Accelerator, where we invite speakers that are widely recognized for their contributions to knowledge graphs, knowledge engineering, and fair data. Our today's speaker is Danny Brzezinczyk, who is from the Wikimedia Foundation and is there the head of spatial projects in order to lead the abstract Wikipedia project. Then he got his PhD from the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology in 2012 and is also the co-founder of Semantic Media Wiki. He also launched Wikidata, that's why you know, we are all here, at the Wikimedia in Germany and then went on to have a career at Google as ontologist working on the Google Knowledge Graph project. Danny, we are so happy to have you here and the stage is all now yours. Take it away and we are all looking forward to your talk. Thank you so much for this very nice introduction and thank you all for having me here. Um, it's, uh, it's truly an honor to uh, be uh, able to speak here. So um, I'm going to talk about how to think about knowledge beyond the graph and um, particularly with, uh, with one specific use case, which is a multilingual Wikipedia, which we're trying to build now at the Wikimedia Foundation. The mission of the Wikimedia movement is to imagine a world where everyone can share in the sum of all knowledge. That's a pretty wide goal. Let's see where we are uh, with regards to that today. So Wikipedia today is available in more than 300 languages and has more than 55 million articles. Um, but you know, this sounds great on paper, but the thing is it's very uneven distributed. On the one side you have languages like English with more than 6 million articles. And on the other side, you have a language like Amharic, which has more than 20 million native speakers but has less than 15,000 articles. And this is not a complete uh, uh, encyclopedia, obviously. But it's not just, you know, there are small languages, there are big languages, so English is full of everything and the other languages are just like trying to catch up. Not at all. If you look at English, for example, if it's, six to, uh, if it's more than six million articles and compare, for example, German with its two and a half million articles, one of the interesting things is that they're only about half of the German article topics are also represented in English Wikipedia. More than 1 million articles in the German Wikipedia are about topics that the English Wikipedia has no knowledge about at all. And this even goes down to Amharic, where we have, for example, an article like this about Quanta Thurtha, a local Ethiopian dish, and um, it's only available in Amharic. And this is kind of knowledge that is completely locked away from everyone who doesn't speak Amharic. In fact, there are about 2 million, uh, sorry, about 20 million topics that have Wikipedia articles. And English only covers about a third of those. There's a lot of knowledge out there that even as an English speaker, you don't have access to. And if you are in the other languages, it's much, much worse. It's not just the number of articles. Also, the articles are of very different uh, completeness of very different size. So this is the English article about Marie Curie, for example. It goes on for pages and pages. It's, it's a nice, complete article um, with, with a good essay length. In Amharic on the other side, it's a single, um, it's a single line um, of text and that's it. And one of the reasons why this is the case, and this is actually the much more important number than the number of articles, is the community size of active Wikipedians. There are about 70,000 people who contribute like five or more edits per month. And English Wikipedia has 31,000 of those. So almost half of all active Wikipedians are working on the English language edition. And we have more than 300 of those language editions. So it falls off very quickly afterwards. The second largest uh, Wikipedia by activity is German with five and a half thousand um, active contributors. And there are only 11 languages that have a thousand or more active contributors. And in fact, about half of the languages have 10 or fewer active contributors. And you know, creating a full comprehensive current encyclopedia with 10 or less people in the spare time, 
is kind of a challenging task. So we're really not doing very good at this goal of letting everyone share in the sum of our knowledge and letting everyone uh, pull the knowledge out of it. And the, the real problem here is that the inherent cost of Wikipedia is the number of topics times the numbers of languages, because all of the articles in the different language editions are completely independent. They can say independent things. They are written independently, information corrected in one doesn't transfer to the other. They are, they are always, they each a piece of work basically. So we have like 6 billion pieces of work if we have 300 languages and 20 million topics. Um, the question is, can we get to a place where we can turn this multiplication into an addition? Can we create an architecture where instead of the number of topics times the numbers of languages, we can actually decouple the costs, create the topics once, create the languages once, and that's it. Let's see. Because that would actually allow us to reduce the cost of Wikipedia by two orders of magnitude, which gets to a space which is actually um, which the Wikipedia communities are capable of dealing with. And the answer is not we're working towards that. So, for example, this is the Urdu article about Marie Curie. Now, in this article, um, so the info box on the left hand side is mostly coming from Wikidata. You heard about Wikidata last week. So, here the information that we see here is pulled from Wikidata. Then the references that we see at the bottom are almost entirely pulled from Wikidata. The site links on the right hand side um, are coming from Wikidata. And um, also the um, authority control on the bottom is also coming from Wikidata. So basically most of the parts of the page are actually not being um, maintained and written locally. They're all coming from a central space. And this is also true for, um, um, for so for example, so for example, if you just go in the info box, you'll see that here, well, if you speak Urdu, you see that here we're talking about the doctoral advisor of Marie Curie, which is um, Gabriel Lippmann, um, all written in Urdu, so we can, uh, so, um, but see, and this information is, as I said, coming from Wikidata. And the same is true for other languages. So Wikidata, you heard about it, it's a centralized repository, um, a big knowledge graph that everyone can edit. And Marcus was talking about this um, last week. And here we find, for example, a statement about the doctoral advisor of Marie Curie saying Gabriel Littmann. This information was the one that was pulled to, to Urdu. And Wikipedia is by far the biggest um, user of Wikidata data um, and the biggest application of it displaying it to, to literally billions of people um, every month. So besides Urdu, we have the same thing in other languages like Gaelic, for example, where we also have the information about the doctoral advisor of Marie Curie coming from Wikidata along a lot of other information. We have the same information uh, happening in Romanian, for example, and in dozens of other languages, Slovenian, Belarusian, Greek, Czech, Azeri, and even her native Polish is using data from Wikidata to enhance the article about Marie Curie. So, um, this is one way where we really can reduce the cost of creating and maintaining Wikipedia to the number of topics and times uh, plus the number of languages because the, the doctoral advisor has to be kept and maintained in only a single place and available in dozens of languages right now. This is how it already works. Um, and this way we can reduce the cost of creating Wikipedia dramatically because someone can go to Wikidata. As we've seen last week, it can be edited in all of the 400 languages that Wikidata supports. So you can come, be an Amharic editor, update some data about Marie Curie, and it will be immediately available to the Romanian Wikipedia and be displayed there. So you have more eyeballs seeing the data, more eyeballs um, keeping um, correctness of the data and, and uh, potentially updating it so that you have um, higher correctness, more coverage and more availability of all of these information. So all we have to do, right, is to bring everything from Wikipedia to Wikidata and case solved, everything done, right? The problem is it doesn't work like this. The main issue is that Wikidata, like basically every knowledge graph, 
has a limited expressivity. It's it's great at what it does, and um, I probably can't much better than it is. But there are things that Wikidata can't really do. Those are narration, reference by description, and redundancy. There is a knowledge representation mechanism that works really well for those three, which is natural language. Natural language is really good at narration, at reference by description, and redundancy. What do I mean with those three points? Let's take a look. So narration. Um, this is from the article about Marie Curie, and it talks about how Pierre Curie was courting Marie Curie. I just read it quickly. Their mutual passion for science brought them increasingly closer, and they began to develop feelings for one another. Eventually, Pierre proposed marriage, but at first, Sklodowska did not accept that she was still planning to go back to her native country. Curie, however, declared that he was ready to move with her to Poland, even if it meant being reduced to teaching French. Meanwhile, for the 1894 summer break, Sklodowska returned to Warsaw, where she visited her family. She was still laboring under the illusion that she would be able to work in her chosen field in Poland, but she was denied a place at Krakow University because of sexism in academia. A letter from Pierre convinced her to return to Paris to, per to pursue a PhD at Skrodowska's insistence. <coughs> at Skrodowska's insistence, Curie had written up history research on magnetism and received his own doctorate in March 1895. He was also promoted to a professor at the school. On July 26, 1895, they were married in score. Curie's dark blue outfit, worn instead of a bridal gown, would serve her for many years as a laboratory outfit. This kind of narrative, we can, we can take a lot of this information here and pull it into a knowledge graph. We can say, okay, Marie, Chris Kodowska really applied to Krakow. We can say when she applied, we can say when she was born. So we can create a big knowledge graph out of it. But creating this narrative out of a knowledge graph, out of, the, of, out of these declarative statements, would be extremely difficult again to create, to put it into a story, to put it in something that makes sense. And there's a lot of color in the story, which, which is super hard to capture in the knowledge graph if it's possible at all, practically. So narrative isn't something that really uh, goes easily with declarative um, knowledge representation systems like knowledge graphs. The second thing is reference by description. People are talking about Curie's dark blue outfit, for example. Well, we can now create an item in Wikidata about Curie's dark blue outfit, but this is not really what we, um, what makes it, like, what, would we create the item for everything that is being mentioned inside of the text? It just gets, it doesn't get practical at some point for those things. What natural language is good at is actually creating those phrases that are referring to things that are, by description. So you can talk about Marie Curie's right hand, you can talk about Pierre Curie's wedding band without having to create an item beforehand in order to be able to speak about it. Um, and there are KR mechanisms to do this kind of things. Wikidata isn't one of them. Wikidata um, can only talk about things where you create an item and, pro and provide it with an ID in advance. So this is, uh, this is the second thing that Wikidata is not particularly good at capturing. And the third one is redundancy, um, stating things that are already inferable, which is quite a redundant st uh, statement. Um, so let's take an example about redundancy. So if you look at basically every larger article about Marie Curie across the languages, and it doesn't matter if I'm looking at, you know, English or German, Italian, Spanish, Chinese, Russian, Arabic, in all of those, within the opening, para, uh, within the opening um, few paragraphs, the one statement is always being, uh, being said. Um, so someone went for the, and remember that all these texts are independently written. So someone, someone in each language went for the effort to write down this statement into this article, which probably means something very, very important for Marie Curie, because there's so many people who think it is important. And this is this statement. This is the statement in Arabic, here in Russian, Spanish, Italian, German, Chinese, in Korean. In Korean, it's actually half of the opening uh, paragraph. And you still don't know what it is about. It's uh, because you don't speak any of those languages. And then you know how it feels when you're on the web and you don't speak English because a lot of information is locked away from you. In English, the statement is the following. She was the only person to win the Nobel Prize in two different scientific fields. And this is a statement um, which is highly redundant to the knowledge that we already have in Wikidata. In Wikidata, we have all the Nobel Prize winners. Uh, we can easily create a query that shows us where, 
who are the people who won the Nobel Prize in two different scientific fields and will get the answer? We see it's only Marie Curie. But this is not explicated. And here we see that in Wikipedia, in the opening paragraph of so many languages, people went for the effort of actually creating the sentence. So this is an important sentence from Marie Curie. And it's hard to capture it in, uh, in Wikidata. It's impossible to capture it in Wikidata. It's hard to capture it in um, most KG formalisms. So I was actually asking now, can I say this kind of sentence in OWL, for example, which is uh, a widely used ontology language for, um, supporting knowledge graphs. So I asked this on my Facebook feed and I had like tons of people uh, chiming in and make, uh, and arguing and, and discussing. I think Pascal, you were also involved in this one. So we had, we had people who have written the, those standards. We have people who are professors in knowledge representation uh, chiming in. We had several Googlers work, um, um, chiming in. We had AAAI fellows working, uh, working this out. And the end, the result was basically summed up by Bijan Pasia. Yes, it's possible, but it's not great. Um, and the solution would be something like this. I think it was Pascal who actually came up with this one. Um, so yeah, we can express the formal semantics of what we're trying to say here in OWL. Now, if every time I'm trying to say such a sentence inside of, um, of a system, I need actually, um, you know, the world's experts in knowledge representation to be, uh, to be able to say that, it won't really scale. And the other thing, even if I have this sentence now, I can't actually turn it easily into natural language again because it's it's hard to capture what the sentence is trying to say in a way that people can understand it. This is much harder to understand, I'd claim, than you know having a natural language sentence like Marie Curie was the only person who received the Nobel Prize in two different scientific categories. So is there a different way we can capture this kind of sentence? And I'm very careful of saying I'm trying to capture this kind of sentence. I'm not trying to capture the semantics of the sentence. So, and um, in natural language uh, processing, we have the notion of, of frames. So the idea is we could maybe have something like a frame that's capturing the meaning of the address as the only person that, and we have a person and a condition. And the condition of the condition is complicated. It would be like winning an award, okay? So the award is a Nobel Prize and the type of the Nobel Prize is, or, Let's take something like a modif uh, non phrase of a modifier as the modifier is a different scientific tool category. And, and I hope is, that is somewhere. I'm hand waving here a lot. This is probably not how it will look like. It's just like to show how it could possibly work. So the hope is that this kind of abstract representation that we see now on the left somehow captures the mean, no, not the meaning, somehow captures the, um, this sentence. And it doesn't exactly matter if it's exactly the sentence or if it's a sentence like the only one who ever won Nobel Prizes in two different sciences was Marie Curie. You know, both of them have sufficiently similar meanings that they're, that they're okay. It's, it's important that, they are, that what comes out is correct. It doesn't have to be exactly the, um, in a specific form. And what is also important is that you can actually take this abstract representation and also trans, um, generate the same sentence, this, the same sentence, the same meaning in different languages, like for example, he, uh, in Croatian or in German or, or in Amharic. And um, the hope is that we can have a single way of capturing this kind of sentences and then have uh, the translation in different languages. So, so we would have those constructors like only person that, which takes a person and a verb phrase and returns a clause. Award winning returns a verb phrase has different kind of slots. The noun phrase is modified as a different kind of slots. So these kind of constructors. And then for each constructor we would have, and for each language, we would have a renderer that takes a constructor with its slots filled and turns it into natural language. Again, this is extremely simplified here. Um, English works particularly well because it's a highly isolated language and I don't have to care that much about agreement and so on. For other languages, it gets much more complicated. I hand wave again for creation because creation actually does have much more uh, um, uh, agreement. But you know, you, you can imagine that we have those renderers per constructors and per language that translate the constructors into natural language. So what we end up with is we would have a place in Wikidata where we store a series of these constructors, then we have a, uh, then we have those renderers that turn it into natural, that generate natural language out of this. And this can then be used by the Wikipedias and people can just read it. 
And whenever something here is being updated in the constructors in Wikidata, we would update the text immediately in um, the Wikipedias based on the rendering. And we would have those renders in different languages, so we can do this in all kind of different languages. Now, the thing is, building those constructors, building those renderers, is something that we can do with a small team. We can either hire a few, uh, a few thousand people and do it for all the languages we support, or we do it the Wikimedia way, we crowdsource it. And our plan is exactly that. We want to create a new place called Wikifunctions, where we allow people to create constructors, where we allow people to create renderers, and then we can have this um, uh, infrastructure in place. It allows us basically to create one abstract content for each item of interest, then we have a set of renderers for each language, for each constructor. We have one um, render. And um, we have Wikidata at the basis that has the lexical and ontological knowledge that we can use. And we have funct uh, Wiki functions that are, uses those functions to actually create those things. And this really then leads us to this kind of architecture where the cost of Wikipedia is really the number of topics plus the number of languages. Basically, we have the same, we have a constant size per language that we need to support, and we have um, one single cost per topic. And this reduces the cost for creating Wikipedia massively. So the architecture is already a half in place, basically. We have Wikipedia, and it can already use the knowledge from the items and the lexemes inside Wikipedia. What we need now to add is basically the place to store this abstract content and then have the new project wiki functions that allows for storing the renderers, that allows for storing the constructors to create and maintain those data. And they can then use the lexemes to actually render the natural language. What are these lexemes? So that's something that Marcus was only touching on slightly last week. Basically, one thing is, so we have for water for example, in Wikipedia, we have a lot of information. We know that, you know, water has um, a boiling point. We know its chemical formula. We know its melting point. We know that it's made of oxygen and hydrogen and, and all of these things. We have this ontological knowledge about water in Wikidata. But what we also have is lexicographical knowledge about the different words representing water in Wikidata. And what we can do out of that, for example, is so we have all these different words of our water, and we can, for example, create this etymological tree of the um, Indo-European languages out of Wikidata directly, because all these words here have their own entries in Wikidata. So we can then take a look, for example, at the English word for water. And this is indeed the English noun for water. It's not the entity water. So, um, and we know that it's derived from water. And what we would have here are the different forms of water. We would have it's plural and singular. English is not particularly interesting about different forms. And we would have different senses. And one of the senses of water would then be actually to point to the ontological concept of water. Um, and so all of this stuff is happening in Wikidata and we're working on it since about 2018 where we introduced the lexicographic knowledge. Um, in, and here's an example from a language of a few more forms. Finnish, those are only the first four forms. It has many more forms. So the, the Finnish uh, word vesi is a uh, noun for water, if I remember correctly. And then we have then, we know that, okay, the singular nominative is vesi, the nominative plural is vedet, the singular genitive is vedet, and so on and so on. So we have all these uh, different forms inside of Wikipedia. And those we can use then to generate the natural language uh, from abstract Wikipedia. That's the goal. We are not there yet. We're working on it. The coverage of the lexicographic knowledge, and said it's, we're only starting with those things. It's been ongoing since 2018. It's like visualized here. Um, so for, for English, we already cover 88% of all the words that appear in English Wikipedia. Um, for Finnish, um, it's the numbers are lower, about a quarter of them. Um, so, so we're working on having this more complete. And this is just another visualization of how this works. So we can take a sentence like, the time is always right to do what is right by Martin Luther King. Um, and we can then annotate each of the words with the lexemes from uh, Wikidata, have it annotated with the, with, so, so is, is for example annotated with the lexeme B, which is an English verb. And then we have to, uh, we can select the correct form. In this case, it's a third person singular present indicative is and then we can also select the sense, for example, right? The sense here, sense two, correct, not wrong, appropriate. And so we can display how the language model is being used for annotating content. And this is 
Modulex seems to. Okay, so for this architecture about uh, that allows us to create this abstract Wikipedia, we want to make sure that the content, the constructors, the renderers are maintained by the community. They're not created by a small team anywhere. They have to be available to the community. The system must be understandable and editable in a predictable way, which, which actually removes a lot of uh, usage of uh, machine learning because you know you can't go in and say, oh, there's an error, let's go and fix it quickly for a community member. And we have to support graceful degradation. Um, but there's also some reasons for optimism why this whole crazy idea could work. First, we're only looking for a single genre, encyclopedic text. We're not trying to uh, um, represent prose, we're not trying to represent manifestos or lyrics or whatever. It's just encyclopedic text, and encyclopedic text is okay if it's a little bit dry. We don't need to parse and understand language. We can start very simple and have a low baseline. We have seen, we have only a sentence about Marie Curie and Amharic, and in Hausa, a language that has 80 million people, there's no article at all. So you know, the baseline is very, very low, and we can easily create value. We can easily give a lot of knowledge to a lot of languages with, very simple, um, with a very simple start. The whole incentive structure is very promising and we have an attractive goal because in the end we are really working towards allowing everyone to share in the sum of our knowledge. This is what we're trying to go to. So how are we going to do this now? Okay, let's get a little bit into the specifics. If you look at those constructors, renderers and content and squint a little bit, they look a lot like things that we know much better from programming languages. Um, constructors are basically types of programming language, in, as, as programming language. Renderers are functions and contents, but those are values of the types that we have, those instantiated types. And the idea now is to create wiki functions, not only it's this, this new project, not only for renderers and uh, content and so on, but to create it for all kinds of functions, to open it up to how programmers understand functions. And this will allow us to use then it for also for a natural language generation library. So wiki function is a new project where we aim something for like something like a Wikipedia for algorithms. We want to have pages about functions. It will be the first new Wikimedia project since 2012 when Wikidata launched. We're planning to launch this year, hopefully in the summer, and it will be completely multilingual just with Wikidata in terms of natural languages, and to, but also in terms of programming languages. The name wiki functions was chosen by the community through a process. We are now in the process of actually choosing our logo. You see the current um, candidates here. If you uh, want to submit a logo, if you want to join the discussion about the logos, you are very welcome to, uh, to, uh, to come and, and make submissions and join the discussions. We, we plan to have this wrapped up by the spring. So, I don't have to explain here what a function is. Um, you know what, uh, that, uh, you know, it's mapping um, entities in one uh, set to entities in another set. Yet. So, but more importantly than that, actually, functions are knowledge. Um, and in that case, in that sense, functions really fall into the purview of the Wikimedia Foundation that we want to provide everyone uh, to be able to share the sum of our knowledge. Functions are knowledge and the big companies know that. Um, if you go to Siri, you can ask it how many te uh, teaspoons and two tablespoons, and then you will have a, a function being executed that calculates you that two tablespoons are six teaspoons. It's a function. Nothing spectacular, but there's a function running on your, um, on your phone, on your behalf, answering your questions. The same thing happens when you go to Bing and you ask when was the NSF founded, and this is not looking it up on the web and giving you, you know, 10 blue links about trying to answer it, but no, it's looking up in the knowledge graph that um, Bing has and gives you the answer out of it, pulling it out and tell you, oh, that's May 10, 1950. And then I can go, for example, to, to Duck, Duck to go and ask how many days since May 10, 1950, and it will, again, it's not doing a search here, it's actually calculating a function and giving you the answer. It's telling you 25,845. Or here, one of my favorite examples, you can just go to Google and ask, what's the volume of a pyramid? And you get this beautiful experience where you can enter the, uh, the relevant values, it's all visualized, it shows you the formula with the substitution of your values and calculates the results out of it. A, won a wonderful example of how to um, get a function implemented on your behalf. But as soon as you get out of these predefined experiences, out of these experiences that the companies think worthwhile to set up a team to actually create those experiences for you, you are on your own. If you ask how many pages in Springer format are 10 pages in ACM format, it's like, oh, none of those are like, 
I have no idea. <laughs> they all give you certain temporal links and that's it. So, but, but functions, as I said, are knowledge and we know that knowledge is power, right? So in this sense, functions are really a superpower because functions generate knowledge. Functions create answers. They give you even more than, you know, just a text in any case, they give you, they give you actually, a, um, they, they can create new knowledge based on your questions. And I want to democratize this knowledge. I want to give everyone access to those functions. You know, creating these functions is easy for a programmer. It's easy for um, someone who has a computer and knows how to code uh, code up, you know, Python or C plus plus or whatever, and create those things. But for for many people out there, it's basically an impossibility to use the abilities of computation that the, all those machines around have. They can't just go and do arbitrary computations, not only because many of those computations are, and many of those devices are trying to actively lock out the general um, computation um, capabilities that they have, but also because people actually don't know how to write this code, how to control the machines in that sense. So what we're trying to do in Wiki functions is create a large library of functions that people can create functions in all kinds of domains where they can access them and, and use them and so on. So to, to look at a few examples, so we would have, I assume, probably a function that converts tablespoons into teaspoons that people can then um, use and, and run. We can have a function that tells you, oh, you take two dates and return the day, and we can, uh, we can again run it and give you uh, results. We can do things like, it's very simple. let's take a simple example, multiplication. Um, so multiplication takes two positive integers, returns a positive integer. That's a possible uh, function for multiplication. Obviously, we can uh, have more complex um, types here, like, for example, the complex number type, um, and so on. So the thing is, so for each function that we define in wiki, day, in wiki functions, we can have several implementations. So we can have an implementation in JavaScript, one in Scheme, and then something in Composition, a couple in seconds. So in JavaScript, what we basically, this is, the, uh, this is the implementation, nothing surprising here. In Scheme, it's just a slightly different syntax. And then we have this Composition. Now, Composition is not a programming language that you have in the not have heard yet. Um, it actually just means we're composing existing functions from wiki functions together in order to allow to, um, to get higher level functions out of it. So if, uh, multiplication can obviously be defined by recursive addition. Um, and this is what is happening here. And now the interesting thing is what you see here is can it be completely automatically just like, like in Wikidata switched over to a different language. So here, for example, have we have the Bengali view on this. This is the same function that we see here, it just uses Bengali label and all the other functions that we use also have Bengali labels. And therefore we see that we actually have an implementation of this function in Bengali. And, um, and we can now create functions without people having to learn English first, for example, which, is, uh, which has been uh, found a major impediment for access to creating functions and for, and successful for using functions. So Wiki functions aims to provide functions in many, many different languages. We really want to democratize access to functions. We want to allow access um, to functions from many different modalities. You want to allow you know, to call those functions from your own code, in apps, from smart speakers, from websites, from spreadsheets, in all kinds of places you want to allow that. You want to provide a standard library of functions that you know you can use in a new programming language. All you need to do is to do a binding to wiki functions and you don't have to provide a standard library anymore. You can just use it from wiki functions. We want to allow to compare the functions that we have to existing code bases and find you know, near clones, near misses. I've been just looking at GitHub and checked out like the first 20 implementations of how many days between two dates and half of them get, um, um, get the leap days implementation wrong. There's so much code out there, which is just wrong. And people re repeatedly write those instead of having a common library where we can work together and build together. Just like, you know, Wikidata provides a common knowledge graph that we all can work um, together on. We can have training data for language or function translation and the main um, use case that we're aiming for, a natural language generation library for 300 and plus languages, which, which is what we need for AppSecPedia. 
And it is a little bit of a stretch, you know, to go from a function that converts tablespoons to teaspoons to a function that takes the only person that constructor and renders it in English. So there's a little bit of work to be done to get from one to the other. And um, taking our time. So this year, we really want to focus on launching wiki functions, making it scale, um, curating a community, building, uh, coming up with uh, finding community that can work on those things. And the next year we want to add a focus on AppSec Wikipedia, on finding the right constructors, on, on finding the right um, starting blocks to write generators in different languages and so on. So that in about 2023, we expect we will have many more people share in more knowledge across more in, in more languages and really aim for this goal of a world where everyone can share in some of our knowledge. Thank you for your attention. Um, I see there have been already a lot of comments in the chat, which I completely ignored. Um, and now we can get to questions. <laughs> Thank you. Danny, I can uh, uh, assure you that there are many, many people clapping right now. You just can't hear them. But you know that was an absolutely fantastic and so inspiring talk. I was, you know, I'm not a social media person, but I could just to write this on Twitter in terms of the clarity of your presentation. I wish I could give talks like this. Uh, what I would suggest we do is that you basically, if you if you have a question, you either raise your hand in in the chat. There's a, if you click on participants, you can raise your your hand digitally, um, or if there's a pause in that, I will simply read from the chat because there's quite some discussion in the chat as well. So please raise your hand or speak up as long as it's as it's quiet. So there's a raised Hi. hand, but yes, go ahead. Well, this is Daniel Schwabi. Uh, I wrote in the chat, but I'll, I'll just say it out loud. Uh, uh, it's an interesting idea, right? But now suppose I have this huge collection of functions and I want to develop my own or I needed to use in an application. And how would I find the function that does what I want, right? Uh, yes, yes that's, a, that's a great question. Um, we will allow, so for every function, we will allow to actually provide it with a documentation. Um, so let me go back to, to, the, uh, to a function definition here. So we will have uh, free text documentation in language. We have we will have labels. We will have um, alternative labels, aliases, just like in Wikidata, and basically, and we will have a signature for each function. So you can use the signature, for example, to cut it down. You you often know like okay, what is your result type to be? What are the input types that you have available? And then with the natural language text that we have and the labels and the aliases, we hope to provide a search experience where you can where you can go and find the functions. One of the problems that I have right now in programming is always now. If I switch from JavaScript to Python and I want the function that takes a string and cuts off the spaces at the end, is it strip, is it trim, is it whatever? And in the semantics of those is always the same, um, but I always have trouble remembering which one is it in this given language. And uh, modern IDEs have good ways to actually help you with finding those. They use the documentation. You can add additional labels to those and so on. So our hope is that, um, those functions will all be, uh, not all, but we hope that the functions will be uh, reasonably well documented so that we have um, also, we can use this for supporting the search for each of the functions when you need it. And then I said, you can use the signature also for, for constraint search and hopefully we get to the place. It's basically the same question like with Wikidata, how do I find the right item that I'm um, that I'm looking for? And there, this mix of um, annotations, um, like it's based in the knowledge graph, as well as labels and descriptions help of actually finding those things. I hope that something similar will work, work here. Well, we're trying to learn from um, modern IDEs and experiences in those things to improve that. But but this is basically the idea. Does this make sense? Yes. Let's see. Yeah, let's see, <laughs> indeed. So I have a, I have a question myself while you guys are thinking about yours, raising your hands. 
One of the things that I think is also great about Wikipedia in general is that it's not only about facts, despite, of course, being Wikipedia, but it all reflects of what people think is about a certain topic, what perspective is culturally speaking. I'm asking a little bit of making this just a little bit too canonical across cultures. Um. There, there are two parts to these questions, and the second part is very interesting. So the question is, I'm, I'm paraphrasing the question, please correct me if I'm misunderstanding it. Um, because we have several languages right now, we can actually present a bigger diversity of points of view, because in the different languages you can represent what the culture that speaks this language actually has to say about a specific topic. And by uh, having abstract Wikipedia, having one place where those things are being derived from, we are basically unifying it across those languages and reducing the diversity of knowledge on the web. Roughly what you're asking? Yes, absolutely. Yes, that's my question. So um, I have several answers to that. Um, first, we are not replacing the current Wikipedia articles. If for a specific language, a specific topic has uh, has big Im uh, has a very high import importance. We still expect that there will be an article about this uh, in the in a given language written in the you know traditional way using natural language. So, um, for example, I don't expect that that that, um, that the article on um, the independence war of Croatia will be rewritten using this abstract. Um, syntax and then re and shared between the Croatian and Serbian Wikipedia, for example. This is nothing that I expect. I expect those articles will stay for a long time um, to be in their own Wikipedias. The other answer is, and it's a little bit contradicting the first answer, <laughs> um, is that I actually don't think that a diversity that is not accessible to people is a real diversity. If you have a different point of view in, you know, in Spanish about a topic than you have in, um, in Arabic, for example, about the history of, let's say, uh, Morocco, right? So, so Spanish and Arabic might have very different views on this article. Or, or, the, or the articles about the history of Palestine in, um, you know, in Arabic and in Hebrew might be very different on this topic. But if a person only reads Hebrew or only reads um, Arabic, they're not exposed to this diversity of knowledge at all. It's like it doesn't even exist. Um, um, if they only can access the, per, uh, the, the Hebrew version, uh, then, then they just get a kind of biased information that's it. So AppSec Wikipedia would help us also to to you know, find agreement on this. So what happens today is that a lot of time people go to the English Wikipedia and there they come to an agreement somehow. And we have an English Wikipedia being the, the mutual point of view for a lot of topics where the local Wikipedias are more biased. And I hope that we can actually transfer this kind of effect to the, to the abstract Wikipedia as well. And therefore actually, the point is not to, to decide one of these points of view is right. The, the point is, um, in Wikipedia not to find the truth and represent the truth. The point is to find what do the sources say and to represent all points of view um, fair, uh, in a fair way. So we hope to get to this point. The third, the third answer to that one is, with abstract Wikipedia, we hope to make it a little easier to figure yeah. out the difference in a different Wikipedia is intentional or accidental. For example, according to the Cebuano Wikipedia. The mayor of San Francisco is, I think, until this day, I'm not sure if it got fixed since last year, is Diane Feinstein. Diane Feinstein hasn't been mayor of San Francisco since the 1970s, and I have no clue how she happened to be, uh, to be the current mayor of San Francisco in Cebuano. They probably used a very old data source in order to import this or something like this. Um, but I don't think that there is a specific relation between the Cebuano language community and Diane Feinstein to make her still current mayor of San Francisco in the article, that this is anything cultural. It's just, you know, out of date. That's all of it. So there might be things where we want to have a different point of view in different language, which will still allow, but just, you know, the local Wikipedias will override whatever absolute Wikipedia creates. Um, 
But in many cases, those differences are just accidental and we currently don't have no way to capture like are they intentional, are they accidental? And I hope that ICBP that can help a lot with those. So would each point of view be captured separately in abstract Wikipedia? Yes. And how would you tie them together to somehow they refer to the same thing? Oh, they're, they're all captured in the same article. It's just like the English Wikipedia oh, article. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah okay. Mm -hmm. You just, you know, basically, you literally say, uh, according to these sources, this and this is the case, but these sources contradict this and they say that this and this is the case or whatever is suitable for your, um, for your topic. Again, remember that um, that we're not building, that those, that those constructors are not tied to our formal semantics and therefore and these are intentionally, obviously, I welcome researchers to, to, to try to build the formal semantics on top of that. So there is nothing like uh, automatic consistency check between those things. And if we have contradictions, this is nothing that the problem that there is a problem for the system because there is no such a thing like a formal contradiction in the system because we don't have formal semantics. Um, and just uh, output natural language text and the reader is then tasked with, with reading it, understanding it, just as they are today with natural language. And there might be contradictory information in that and it's hopefully is qualified enough to, to put them into perspective. Hi, uh, I have a question. Um, I'm Alex Vargas, I'm a PhD student in, in CS. Uh, thank you for, for your talk. Uh, so I have a question. Mm, uh, do you envision to, to this to be like a repository so we can orchestrate uh, workflows? Uh, if you can um, share a little bit about, about that. Yes. Um, so the functions that we will be collecting in the in wiki functions will be pure functions, no side effects, um, no change in state. They and without uh, they don't they don't have state at all. So if you want to use them in a workflow, you basically still need a workflow engine that then can use those functions from wiki functions to to you know calculate results to to, to apply this um, those functions to, to get to some results. But you would still need to have uh, the, a workflow engine that, that does this and like takes, okay, now I'm, I want to use this calculations for wiki functions and I get this result. Okay, what you do with this result then has to happen outside of wiki functions because of this requirement that we are stateless and pure. Um, but, as, uh, but I would still think that, you know, having a big library of curated, well-implemented functions and so on uh, that are checking each other's because they are actually available in different programming languages and definitely can check actually the results against each other and so on, will be very valuable to creating workflows because you can create them on a, on a higher level. You don't have to go and deal with things like, um, you, you can put a lot of the stuff into wiki functions. Like for example, if you want to, if you have a formula or a model about the Acidity, um, acidity of, uh, of the ground based on different input par uh, parameters, for example. This is something you can very well express in wiki functions, have the appropriate types, have the appropriate values, and then you create this result. Then you can discuss this, uh, this function, this model, you can point to it, you have an identifier, for, you have URL for each function. You can point to it and discuss it and um, agree on it, and then use this function in a workflow to to do things, but 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 the wiki function itself wouldn't be doing anything itself. So so the actual anything that's doing that's changing state that's doing something has to be implemented on top of that. Does this make sense? Yeah yeah yeah. Thank you. So I, I was uh, yeah I, I'm asking because I know that uh, sharing scientific models in among the scientific community like is really important. So I think that this uh, might be a good idea pushing to that direction and help scientists, you know, to share more scientific models and help build those uh, uh, scientific workflows. Yeah, I would hope that we can basically have a common place where we can share this kind of functions, agree or disagree on them, have competing ones, point to them, but, you know, having a universally accessible ID, a URI for each function seems like a very good idea in order to be able to make very, very concrete what you are um, referring to and, and then you can use those things in 
different um, use cases. Thank you. Uh, Danny, I have a question about the uh, translation of the dialect. Like in Mexico, Spanish is the main language, but uh, uh, Mexico also has several dialects language, other like Mayo is a, uh, one of the language. But if uh, in, like in Google, we have, we can translate como estas to uh, how are you? But if in uh, how to convert, is there a wiki function can be helpful to convert the dialects of the uh, Mexi uh, into English or uh, uh, like the Spanish? How can, uh, we are actually doing in this uh, area uh, in Mexico. So uh, can you suggest me which type of tool or something a wiki function can help in this? So we won't be able to translate from one language or from one dialect to another um, because we don't, we, uh, we, we might, but we're not planning to support the parsing of um, natural language. We're just planning to support the generation of natural language, which is much simpler. Now, having said that, you can actually rather simply um, take an existing um, language as a base and then and say, well, we'll fall back to this language whenever um, we don't have anything in our specific language. Um, and, then, and then create a language which just changes a few of the things. And those can be either grammar rules that are being changed, those can be um, different uh, words which are used in, in, in specific cases and so on. So you can basically say, okay, using this, Mexican dialect, for example, I'm basically basing it off Spanish, but I'm changing the following terms, and I'm I'm, I'm changing two of three uh, two or three of the grammar rules, and the output now um, would be uh, in this um, dialect. So this should be helping with people to feel comfortable to read the text in the way they most feel. Um, this, 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 that is the least barrier to them. And I'm specifically not saying only for dialects, uh, this might be the case. If I think, for example, about languages like Croatian and Serbian, I can totally see that they could share a lot of lexicographical knowledge, they could share a lot of grammatical knowledge, and then have on top of that the things that actually differentiate them. And the same is probably true for, for other languages which are uh, similar to each other um, and um, and, and so on. So whether a dialect or language, we would be able to support any of these in generation. Again, we're not working on parsers uh, for those. If someone starts to write parsers on these, I'm very happy to support it in wiki functions, but it's not, it's not the goal, no, it's necessary for AppSec Wikipedia to work. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. Yeah. Hi, Danny, can you hear me? I hear you. Hi. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for a wonderful talk. Uh, I think Christoph was very right. It was an excellent presentation. Um, I just have a quick question about wiki functions. Currently, you seem to be envisioning this as something that has a very broad scope. Do you think it may distract from achieving multilingual Wikipedia? Would it be more effective if May perhaps a subproject of this wiki functions would focus in, in particular on these renderers because this wiki functions. I mean, this is huge, right? Absolutely huge. You just mentioned uh, functions won't have a state; uh, they won't have any side effects, but tend to compose useful code in JavaScript or your Java or iOS or an Android. I mean, good luck, right? Uh, but that's a different issue altogether, I suppose. Do you think the broad scope of wiki functions will distract from? more quickly and more effectively realizing uh, um, you know, multilingual Wikipedia. Thank you for the question. I can see, um, I, 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 could, I can see arguments for that, but I actually think that this is on the contrary. Um, by supporting um, the broader scope of Wiki functions, remember that the contributors to Wiki functions will be volunteers. So if someone is interested in creating mathematical functions, if someone is interested in creating um, string processing functions and so on, um, and not interested in natural language generation functions, it's not like they, they lose their contributions to the natural language generation library because they wouldn't be working on that in the first place. Um, natural language generation is not exactly the easiest uh, library to start with. So our hope is that in the first year of wiki functions, we will basically learn our way around, you know, build, setting up the infrastructure to support the creation of functions and so on. And by starting with something simpler like mathematical functions um, that are more 
clearly defined and implemented. Um, we hope to, to learn a lot of experience that we can then use for natural language generation, uh, for the natural language generation library. We will add, uh, so the plan is to add then more um, resources. So, so to continue working on wiki functions, but also to add more resources to work on abstract Wikipedia and the natural language generation library. And that we, and we expect that the community will organically um, grow to have people who are interested in natural language generation, but and people who are interested in the, in the other scopes that wiki functions is aiming to support. But these other scopes will already help us to to scale the system, to figure out its problems and so on. And, and, um, and um, so therefore I think that having the spider scope actually will allow us to faster get to a thriving and large community. And that by not reducing the scope to a specific domain, um, we can actually support the specific domain of natural language generation better than if we would just say, okay, we can only work on, on this topic. It's similar to the question, if you think about it, when we started Wikipedia, should we have said, oh, well, it's a Wikipedia about, you know, everything that encyclopedias cover. This seems a big scope. And so maybe we should focus first on history, or maybe we should focus first on geography or something like that. And because this is already such a big task and so on. I think by saying, well, we do everything that encyclopedias do. We do everything that you may cover with functions. We're actually inviting a much larger community. And these are our resources. It's not like, you know, if, if this would be created by a team, I would totally agree with you. This would be a complete diversion because, you know, I would need people who create this stuff and would need to be with this stuff. But, but, those are, but these are all crowdsources, are volunteers. And there is no way I can tell the volunteers, or oh, now, we're not going to work on, on complex number mathematics. Right now, we have to work first on the, on the case system of, um, of Finnish. Um, this is not how volunteering to the projects work. So by having the wider scope, I hope to actually get a more uh, thriving community and to be able to um, have a bigger scope um, and be able to, to grow faster um, to where we want us to see. Many, many left in the chat and also raised hands, and we are out of time. But Carl has been raising his hands for, for quite a long time. Carl, would you to go last? If so, you are on mute. Yes, hi. Thanks for recognizing me. Um, so, bra bravo on your proposal. I wholeheartedly support it. Um, my, I posed a question in the chat focused on whether or not the, these functions would be usable for bis to describe business capabilities, which are often described using natural language. But uh, perhaps a more interesting question is, um, in the AI world, machine learning world, there's a big focus on algorithms and building libraries of algorithms. Um, and ideally publishing them to uh, help people trust, I guess, the use of those constructs. Um, any, any comments on maybe connecting the two ideas? Oh, um, I totally see that there are strains in machine learning and, and modern AI which are trying to connect, you know, to libraries of functions, or things like, you know, neural Turing machines and, and other systems, which could actually rely on having a library of algorithms. Yep. And uh, what we're trying to build here is basically such a library of algorithms. So the way that Wikipedia is already a major building block for machine learning and modern AI, the way that Wikidata is already a major um, yeah. um, building block for, um, for AI and machine learning, I hope that Wiki functions will provide a third um, uh, um, component from, uh, that yeah. will actually support the building of these systems. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, basically, I think it's fundamentally about transparency. So the more that stuff is declared, then the more people will have a, 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 an understanding that gives them some confidence. Yeah. But thank, thanks I, again. I would totally love to see at some point, for example, the capability that someone just writes the 
description of a function, uh, like a definition of a function into the system, describes it in natural language. And based on the compositions that we already have, that we're saying like, okay, if you compose it like this, you get this result, if you compose it like this, you get that result, that you can see a machine learning system, you know, something bird-like or whatever, that generates new compositions um, that result in the, in the functions. And since we will also have tests in wiki functions, um, you can immediately check if those tests at least are supported by the new implementation that is not generated by the machine and so on. So yeah, yeah. Nice. it would be yeah. tremendously cool if in the end you could create a, you know, you just document your function, you add a few tests, you give it a signature, and um, a machine learning system generates then a possible implementation for it. This would help so much with democratizing, you know, coding, yeah. because you don't even need to code anymore, you just need to be able to describe what you actually want. Agreed. I, I, I mean, totally discussion, yeah. folks. But unfortunately, I have to cut you short. We are, uh, you know, reached the end of our session here. I'm sure you can discuss. Further. Thanks again, Danny. What a fantastic talk. much. I hope you all enjoyed it and have a rest, great rest of your day. Thank you for having me. It was a great opportunity. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you all.